Hi everyone, uh, it is officially Boxing Day today and I'm going to be doing a, a, a battery video today. Um, now, it, it, the other video was meant to go on uh, or be uploaded on Christmas Eve but I had internet problems and you know there's nothing I could do about it. Uh, you know, you're not going to get anyone out over the Christmas period to fix your internet, are you? Um, however, it righted itself and, uh, you know, it's righted itself now, so uh, I'm able to upload videos. Um, so, so the, the Christmas Eve one will be uploaded today uh, at some point, and um, this one will also be uploaded. Um, now, it may look to some, if you look around, that there's nothing going on, but there is. Uh, while I'm on holiday uh, from work, I'm going to completely give this a makeover. Uh, and move everything around and tidy it all up and all that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, while that's kind of going on, uh, I'm still working on the bench. You know, I'm, I'm doing bits and pieces here and there. Um, and one of the things I'm doing, or have been doing, and I'm going to make some more shortly, um, is making zinc hexacyanoferrate. Um, we've got a lovely precipitate at the bottom there. Uh, that's been stood now for about an hour. Um, and it's all kind of settling out, so I'm going to leave it for another couple of hours and then filter it. Um, I've, I've got a bit of a bit of a problem with that though, uh, and I need to ask Rob a question because I'm a little bit confused with it. Um, and that also involves. Uh, I can find it. Ah, this stuff, uh, cerium oxide, which we've seen Gerhard from Eco Gamalpi use uh, in his recent videos, uh, and got good results. I've got a problem with this as well. I'll explain the two now um, because the two are sort of co they coincide, if you like. Uh, so anyway. Um, what we've got there is, <coughs> what, and I've been watching Rob's video again uh, to make sure I get this right, uh, and I have got it right. Uh, Rob called it a, a double displacement reaction, um, which is where you take two compounds uh, and alter them chemically, what we're doing there. Now, you can end up with two altered compounds, or, or one. Uh, as a bond in, in chemistry like this. I hope I get this right. Now, the reason for my confusion is this. Um, if you were to take uh, sodium chloride, there's a, there's a lovely chemical bond there. There's a lovely attraction for obvious reasons. Uh, sodium and chloride. Um, if you look at sodium, in its outer valence shell, there's one lone electron. And if you look at chloride, there are seven in the outer valence shell. So obviously, where you get the attraction is the sodium readily wants to give that electron over to the chloride atom. Um, so what you end up with is two happy atoms or ions. I can never remember which is which, but there you go. Um, because they've now got eight electrons in their outer valence shells, and that's a lovely ionic bond. Um, but here's the reason why I'm confused. Um, sodium is a cation but with a, a plus marker. Um, chloride is a, an anion with a, a minus marker. But when I, when, I look, when I think about I hope I'm not being stupid, but I, I'm going to ask Bob the question, and I hope he doesn't think I'm being stupid, but it is a bit confusing to me. Uh, I'm not a chemist, am I? Um, potassium is a cation, and zinc is a cation, and they're both plus. So I don't know what sort of a, a compound we've ended up with there. Uh, or how, is it bonded, how is it bonded, uh, or have we still got two K 
chemical uh, compound? I don't know. So, uh, like I say, I'm going I'm to ask Rob the question. Um, I'm just a bit confused, shall we say. Now, which leads me to this stuff. Now, as we know, Gerhard used it and it's produced a good battery. Uh, but it's cerium oxide. Now, in there, we've got two metal salts. That's an oxide. Now, oxide's basic. Uh, and it's insoluble. So, what do we do? Well, obviously I've been on the internet, haven't I? You know, Wikipedia, whatever, uh, looking at stuff. Um, and you can convert metal oxides into metal salts with acid treatment, um, where you'll end up with water and the salt. So, um, I'm going to be trying that today as well. Uh, I don't know, I'm going to use uh, weak acid solutions first. Uh, I don't know, acetic, ascorbic, whatever. Uh, and if that doesn't work, I'll move on to hydrochloric acid. Um, so, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, um, another one arrived as well. Um, I'll tell you more about this when I've had a little play with it. Uh, what it actually is. Uh, I don't know what I can do with it yet because it's not specifically um, a metal as such. So I'll let you know about that one. Uh, and the one that didn't arrive, which I was uh, not very happy about, was um, chromium oxide. Um, again, which obviously I've got to convert to a metal salt. Uh, chromium oxide is kind of a, a pigment. I've ordered quite a few pigments actually, uh, various ones um, for various reasons. Uh, it's, it's kind of a green pigment uh, used in all kinds of stuff, you know, soap, or you name it really. So, so that's that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to send Rob a message. Um, I know it's Boxing Day, but he can answer it whenever he can, you know, when he's back to work or whatever. Uh, so, this battery then, uh, water battery, I was intrigued by it, uh, wondered if it had got any kind of potential, um, and yes it has, so have a look at the video if you're interested, uh, I found it quite intriguing actually, <laughs> it worked quite well, you know, um, so anyway, have a look. Okay, uh, the bench is a little bit untidy, as we can see, but don't worry about that. This is just a demonstration. Um, and it's a demonstration of the water battery. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit messy, um, as you can see, because I've just been cleaning up this piece of graphite. Um, I'm not wearing gloves because there's nothing dangerous. Uh, there's nothing, you know, going to affect me or anything like that although uh, it takes ages to clean this off as you know with graphite so I've got a piece of graphite there which I've already cleaned with wire wool um, yes this is a piece of graphite that I've used in previous experiments but they have they have all been uh, in soak for months and months and months and I've changed the water regularly and scrubbed them regularly so there is nothing impregnated in that that I can think of so this is a piece of aluminium and I'm going to scuff it up again okay that's just a brand new piece of aluminium or aluminum as some people would say so what I'm going to do is just clean the surface of that and that now I'll get another piece of tissue like so and we'll cut the tissue just roughly like that and place the tissue on there like so uh, I could cut that short I suppose yeah we'll cut it a bit shorter now I've demonstrated this before I just want to demonstrate it again. 
Um, what I've got there is a brand new tub of deionized water. Okay, and to prove it's brand new, I'm going to do that. And there's the seal. Okay, we're going to take that seal off. Like that. Um, now, first thing I'm going to do is pH test that water. Like so. Okay. So, we can see that that is, well it's going to be a 7 isn't it? It's not an 8. It's definitely a 7. Okay. So that's that. Uh, I'm going to pull off another two of these. Like that. Right. What I'm going to do is... Uh, myself one of these and I'm going to put some of that DI water on there and obviously with the, the pH testers what I'm trying to do is prove a point and show you that there's nothing else going on on the graphite or even the aluminium. So there's the aluminium and you can do this for yourselves. So this is linked up to my, um, let's clear the screen So, and I'm going to give you a close-up of all the action in a minute, just so you know what's going on. But this will remain in camera shot all the time. So this is linked up to my data logger. Now there's no weight on that at the moment, that's what this is for, which is just a piece of plastic obviously. Like so. Um, I'll put that lid back on there. And I'm going to use my trusty ball mill barrel for a bit of weight. Like that. And I'm going to take this camera. And I'm going to show you what it says on the data logger, which is almost 0.9 volts. Now you can see it's set to 20 milliamps there as, as a load. Okay. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to start this off 0.8 20 milliamps <clears throat> as you can see hopefully and I'm going to press start Now the cutoff is 0.3 as you can see. Okay, there's the end of it. <coughs> 59 seconds. But there's some recovery, look. Now, just to prove that other point, we're going to take one of these. Either side of the separator. 
so that's one there we go on the anode side that's two okay and there they are so I'm just going to put those there and you can see they are exactly the same okay now what I'm going to do uh, we'll move this out of the way like I say it's a bit messy around here but you know I'm sure you can forgive me for that that power supply is set on 2 volts and what I'm going to do is press this charge button here like so and you will see the voltage go up to 2 volts and it's climbing ah one thing I did forget to do was start that shall we what I'm going to do uh, let's have a look at the current so that's dropping nicely but I forgot to put the weight back on so I'll do that now the current probably will go up again yeah okay so that's that's pulling like now 60 milliamps which is quite a lot isn't it for a water battery you know it's just a water battery that's all it is um now these can't quite decide uh, sorry you can't see that I can't quite decide where these are. Uh, I think that's around about that seven. Let's have a look at it while it's charging. Still the same. Let's get the other one and go on the other side of the separator, on the anode side, and that as well is exactly the same now that's while it's charging okay so obviously they're quite dry that's wet but as you can see they're still the same there is no difference in pH there at all so that's been going for one minute fit. We'll give it two minutes and I'm going to turn the charger off. Oops, I've uh, pressed something here. I shouldn't have pressed on the phone. Okay, two minutes. Turn the charger off. So, as you can see, that's dropping now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press start again. With the same. If I can get it to start, there we go same 20 milliamp load and uh, judge for yourselves because that's what's going on and this is a water battery maybe DI water is the electrolyte I'm going to move back now so you can see everything again as it was before okay oops okay there we go and there it is, the water battery. Now that is just um, a piece of aluminium and a piece of graphite, a piece of tissue and some DIY water. Now there's no funny business because you can try this at home <laughs> or wherever you want to try it, in your lab or your bedroom or your garage, whatever. You can try this. So that's down to uh, 1.3 volts now and it's been going for a minute on a 20 milliamp load uh, what surface area have we got there now I'm going to do a pH test while this is discharging as well but I know we've got a hundred that way um, we've got So we've got 130 mil by 100 mil as a surface area on the water battery.
and uh, I'll give you a close up of that again because you can see the curve now you can see the voltage, you can see the curve, you can see the time and you can see everything that's about to happen now we're down to about the, the, the 0.8 volts that we had initially now look at that So I'll come away again and put that on there like so. So the battery is still in view. And what I'm going to do while it's discharging, I'm going to do a pH test again. Both sides, anode cathode on the separator. And there it is, exactly the same again. No difference at all. Oops, moving my camera around now. So you can see those, and they are all the same charge, discharge, before anything happened, what the state was beforehand. So you can see that there's, uh, let's stop that, clear that. You can see that there's nothing going on. Now, because that's almost coming to a close. But look at the runtime on that. Three three and a half minutes. That's just incredible. That's just water folks. DI water. Now we know that electrons are flowing because we've got a circuit and it's in a state of discharge. And we also had a state of charge, so electrons are flowing. Because we've, we've got a circuit going there, we've got a 20 milliamp load. Um, so, there we go then, that's that. What I'm going to do now is put the camera back where it was, right there. Put the battery back in view. Now that's recovered back up to 0.85 on its own. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I've got here some some of that uh, coconut activated carbon, and hopefully you can see that that's quite fine on there on that spatula. Okay, that is quite fine. And it's in DI water again, just the same. I'll do another pH test after this. You can see the pH levels. So what I'm going to do is attempt <laughs> to take this apart. Well, interestingly, the voltage is reading 0.976. I'll just show you that first because that's quite interesting, that is. Well, it's up to 0.98 now. And it's continuing to rise all on its own. I've done nothing to it as you know you haven't seen me touch it until I just took that off and you know that looks like it's going to go up to a volt. It's rising too quickly uh, for me to you know say that uh, it wouldn't rise to a volt because I, I just know it will. So we've got electrons moving I wonder what ions we've got moving. Aluminium, I would I would suspect. So okay, I'll take that off. Let's get this apart. What I want to do is I want to put some of this, let me just put that there for a moment. I just want to put some of this active material on there. Now there ain't going to be a lot. Because 
because it's it's just too fine for there to be a lot. And what I'll do is turn that back over, put that back on there as best I can. It's uh, probably if anything's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong now with this tissue, but I'll do my best. Got a bit of an air bubble going on, but. Okay, I'm going to put some active material on the other side. Got to do all this without tearing this tissue. Now as I say, you too can do this at home. Because that is just DI water in there. And DI water on the battery. Or shall we call it a device? I don't know what to call it. <laughs> but I'd, I'd, I'd go for battery. I suppose it could be classed as an asymmetric capacitor right this minute, but uh, so what I'm going to do, we're still at two volts. Um, that's obviously dropped its voltage because I've just taken it apart, but it's still going back up now. It's 0 0.760, but I'm going to put it on charge like that. 140 milliamps. That's discharging. It. We'll press that. We we'll do the same two minutes again. Um, I wanted to give you a close-up of the charging, but I've missed it. We're back down to 60 milliamps now. 50. 50. So it's even charging quicker now than it was before. Um, like I say, that's 27 seconds at the moment. I'm going to give it two minutes. go put everything back in view and again I'm going to do a pH test that's the anode and that's the cathode now we've got a bit of a a darkness going on there but I've just touched the uh, the active carbon so but you can still see because I'm going to give you a close-up of these now when they're dry and all the rest of it you'll see that they're still exactly the same no difference in pH level at all normally with a battery with electrolyte you know you, you, you get some uh, acid on one side and you know uh, it'll be a uh, neutral on the other side or even slightly alkaline, whatever. Uh, but there's nothing on this whatsoever. So we're 1 minute 46 now, 1 minute 47. I'll move this again so you can see that. And then I'm going to press this switch at 2 minutes. Like that, so I've turned it off. And the voltage is dropping as you can see. What I'm going to do, I'm going to press start again, same load, same everything, we'll stop that timer, and we'll see if it's any better with the uh, active material. Now don't forget we disturbed the battery, um, you know, and everything else, so... Now I've got to say, <laughs> there is next to no active material on there, but you know, to be honest, um, I really want to try this experiment with a, a lot of active material. And we've got that strangeness going on with the curve, exactly the same as before, no difference. Um, I'm 
hoping that there's enough weight on there, but there should be. So I'm just going to leave that and let it run. Ah, I'll show you that uh, pH test. Now they're wet, obviously. Um, that one there is drying out a lot. This one's drying out a lot, as you can see. Um, my battery's low, so... Oh, blimey. I really hope that this battery lasts for this the duration of this test. Then I'm going to have to put some charge in this phone. So, back to the computer. And as you can see, it's been running for two minutes at 20 milliamps. You've got that same curve as we had before. It's a shame that... Uh, oh, I wonder if I can just go and grab my charger. Leave that running. And plug my charger in. Um, while this is still operational, because I wanted to go a bit further, further with this experiment. You know, as you can see it. Okay, uh, I'm back with my charger and I can unplug something and get this plugged in. You might hear a beep, but that's me plugging in. Other end, Kev. Right, that's just stopped. That has. Um, that's just the second stop, look. So did my camera. So the runtime was 3 minutes and 47, as you can see. Now my charge is on the wrong side of this, so I'm going to try and turn it upside down like that. Okay, that's better. <clears throat> now you can see the uh, the bounce back as well. Three and a half minutes at 20 milliamps. Uh, even got one milliwatt hour out of it, look, and one ampere. That's just crazy. Um, so what I'm going to do, well actually while I'm here, I'll take that off. I'll get a fresh one of these and I'll do this test as you can see it and there it is do the other side of the separator there ok we've got some carbon on there as you can see but it's still exactly the same now I don't know what, whether you can see that on camera, but uh, I don't know what colour you see that as, but it is definitely in the green. It's definitely there. You see, th this is rubbish on camera. I'm looking through the camera now, and that looks orange to me, but it's not. That's pH seven. Look, you know, um, it's definitely pH seven definite that's five there that's orange that looks yellow yellowy orange but it's it's just the camera and the lighting that is a pH of seven all the way through pH seven so there you have it a water battery um, now obviously what I want to do is put that back on there I put this on charge again, that's 230 milliamps that true as its initial load. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this um, until there's no current draw on that power supply. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm not going to film the charging of a battery. So I'm going to let this, this camera phone phone camera um, charge up as well and I'm going to switch off. So uh, we're at 50 milliamps on the power supply at the moment. When that gets down to zero, 
Um, I'm going to give it a run again, see what we get, see if we get any more out of it. But need to have a little think about what uh, what's going on with this battery. Now, there's obviously ions moving, um, and it's probably <laughs> we've well, got to be aluminium, hasn't it? You know. So, but uh, it's DI water as the electrolyte, as you know. Now, um, as regards the storage of charge, my thoughts are that, let me just get another piece of that, uh, 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 that graphite. Here's an old one. Um, I know that you can get two pieces of this and charge it up and you get some storage on there. You know, that's with an electrolyte whichever electrolyte we use uh, but it's not a lot it's next to nothing you know and you get under load virtually no run time or anything like that um, I've proved that in the past I think I've, on one of my videos I, I actually showed it on one of my videos so aluminium ions possibly storing on this uh, no we can't be hold on that's cathode, not anode. Oh yeah, charging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So we we are possibly now storing aluminium ions in the graphite, integrating into that graphite. Hopefully. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I plan to take this a lot further, as I've said. So uh, I'm going to switch off now and come back when everything's charged up that's down to 20 milliamps now but we'll give it a little bit longer okay we're back um, my battery's still quite low but uh, hey ho um, right as you can see we've done all the pH testing it's all the same it's all pH 7 uh, and this has been on oh, I'll stop that uh, 16 odd well 16 and a half minutes so we'll clear that uh, it's still on charge so I'll turn it off and I'm going to do exactly the same thing I'm going to press start fresh screen 20 milliamp load okay um, let's see if there's any difference with a longer charge then I'm expecting there will be, uh, I can't remember what the last one was, uh, two minutes or something wasn't it, or three, uh, three minutes or something. Um, I'm just going to leave that and I'll be back in a minute. Now unfortunately uh, this camera, or this the, the camera phone that I was using, it, it's, it's well and truly dead. Uh, we're on 4% but it is on charge so I'm having to use my other phone. Um, quite what the results gonna be I don't know but we'll have a look okay we can see that uh, looks a bit clearer than my other phone actually I think I might have to clean the lens or something ah the lines okay so look eight minutes uh, and the bounce back 1.128 volts at the moment is that going up or down don't know uh, it looks pretty static. I wish I could get rid of those lines, but uh, I can't so refocus it. Um, that's probably reached a, a kind of a crescendo, if you like. Maybe it's topped out. Oh no, it's going up. Okay, still going up. Right, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to charge this again now. Um, as you can see, the pH levels have not changed. They are all still seven. Uh, I'm going to put it's still on two volts. Let's see what the current draw is initially. 260 milliamps. Wow, uh, that's 100 milliamps now. 90 milliamps, 80. It's dropping quite quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start that timer again, and I'm going to give this uh, a 30 minute charge and see what happens. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this and I'm going to take a look at the aluminium um, or aluminium. 
and uh, and see what's what because uh, like I've said before you know I am really really intrigued with this one um, I'm envisaging all sorts of things that we could do along these lines with a water battery so I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna come back when that says about 30 minutes and uh, we'll see if we can beat eight minutes that is just incredible um, this uh, this curve also is quite strange so um, I don't know don't know what to say about this but uh, like I say I'll come back uh, we'll give it half an hour And I almost forgot. Okay, that was the uh, the last run, as you know. Uh, 11 minutes 32. I did say uh, that I was going to strip this down and just take a look at the aluminium. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I will build this back up again and charge it again and see what's going on. Now, what I need to do is uh, place that camera back on there, like that, um, so I can get to clean this. So I've got two hands on the job. Now then. What we've got here is a definite line look that was the edge of the overlap onto the uh, the graphite and there is a definite line there and it looks as though well I'll say it looks as though it's definitely uh, the aluminium surface has been disturbed I'm just hoping that you can see that as a difference to that which hasn't been disturbed so I'm guessing uh, that we're using aluminium, aluminium ions. That would explain it. But I'm guessing now that the final thought is, how long would that last? Who knows? Um, more testing, obviously. I need to build one of these. Um, put more active material on it for one. And... Uh, well, just uh, just see what we end up with. Can't see anything uh, remarkably different about that. You know, with the active where the active material is on the uh, the separator, and. definitely can't see that uh, there's anything different about that although there is again a defining line just there so I'm gonna have to give this one some thought I guess to see just what's gone on so there you go folks if you've got uh, any thoughts suggestions ideas as to what's gone on please let me know because it's not a traditional battery is it a battery as we know it over and out